Hello everybody, it's Starlight's Betty Through Nine, and today I'm coming to you guys with a bit of a different video. Um, today we're going to be going through the new Gemini Jets and Phoenix models uh, November 2015 releases. Um, also in this video I'm going to go through a bit of a channel update, talking about content that I still plan to upload, um, content that I'm currently working on, um, and obviously content that I plan to upload in the future. Um, so yeah, that's a bit of a channel update, um, as well as going through these new releases. Um, some of them I'm, you know, I'm pretty excited about. Others, you know, a little bit less. Ones that are typical. I'm just going to be going through them, which ones I'm, you know, interested in, um, the surprises, etc. Um, I also will be touching on the October releases from Gemini Jets since those were, like, really surprising. Um, so I just want to say a couple things about those because I was just really stunned by them. Um, but yeah, we are going to start off with the brand new, um, I mean, these came out, you know, a few days ago. Um, the brand new. Gemini Jets November 2015 releases. So first off, we have your UA763 um, with winglets and 1-200 scale. Now, I think this is the first um, for the 763 and 1-200, so definitely a good release for, you know, coming from a United fan, I'm obviously going to be happy with any UA releases, um, but that's just me. Even then, the aircraft still looks good. Um, I like the 763, so I think if you have that 1-200, it's going to look uh, even better. Um, next up, we have the 1-200. US Airways Express ERJ-170, um, we have seen this in 1400 scale, so seeing in 1200, not too much of a surprise. Um, I don't know, I mean, I guess you could call this a bit of a vintage model. I guess for the collectors who are looking to have this in their you know, collection, um, because this has obviously been transformed into the new American Eagle, um, just save as a bit of an archive, and yeah, so a good release. Um, and obviously this has been changed into the American Eagle livery um, nowadays. And next, we have something new uh, out of Gemini Jets. Now, there hasn't been too many of these. Um, I think there actually might only be one, but I knew that this was coming around. Um, and this is the 172? What do I call that? The scale is 172, um, and it's a Cessna 172. So that is um, something that Gemini Jets has been, I don't know, the first one released was quite a while ago, to be honest. So this hasn't been really released at all. Um, so it is a little bit of a surprise, and I guess it's good that they're keeping it up. Um, the detail on these are actually pretty good. One two, one seventy two, sorry, um, scale. I think is pretty big. It's that's got to be pretty big. Then again, it is a Cessna, so the aircraft will come out a little small anyway. But I do think the detail on this is pretty good. I think Gemini Jets is you know cool and you know pretty optimistic with the aircraft that they make, um, and especially with something like this, I think it's cool that they're keeping it up. So um, good job with this. Next, we have the American Eagle ATR seventy two. Now I've seen before. Um, that a couple of people have requested this aircraft. Now, obviously, this is in the old livery since uh, American Eagle don't cur don't currently operate um, the ATRs anymore. Um, good model. Um, I do like the old American Eagle. I think the livery is once again kind of a vintage airliner. Um, good to have in the collection, and always good to see another regional, in my opinion, of course. Next, we have an Alitalia A320. Now, this one's a one two hundred scale. Um, this one's looking pretty flash. I have to say. Maybe it's just the photo, maybe it's just the light, but the actual aircraft itself does look really nice. Um, the new livery and everything looks really shiny and bright, at least from this angle. So um, definitely looking like a nice, great model and um, yeah, one of the best ones out there from this month. Next we have the Volaris A321. Now this is a pretty good model. Um, this obviously has sharklets as well as you can see. Um, this is a pretty good model. I am a Volaris fan. I, I kind of like them. Um, they've got a nice little business going. You know, to me, I think they're a nice little airline. Um, so yeah, I think it's cool that they're operating some new aircraft, including the A321, obviously one of the more popular, or more popular, um, Airbus aircraft that are out there. A lot of buyers are getting the A321 now, um, there's been so many new customers, so good to see Volaris is joining the club, um, and I think that's a pretty good model. Next we have the Air Canada 77-9, um, this is our 1400 scale release, um, I think this is the first out of the 1400s this month. Um, good release. I do like the Air Canada 788 um, or 788, 789. Both of them I still, you know, I, both of them I do like. <laughs> um, yeah, the 789, I think it does look better than the 788. I think the Air Canada delivery looks good on the 789. Um, in fact, the 789 will be flying to London Heathrow um, soon, you know, somewhere coming next year, I think. So it's going to be taking over a lot of operations, including the A330 and 777-300ER operations. Um, so obviously huge and you know vital for the air count of the fleet. So yeah, good aircraft there. Next in the 1400s we have the brand new Spirit of the Islands. 
Um, this looks like a pretty good model. I do like the detail on it. I think it's a very good choice. Um, I do like all the stuff that Alaska has about those special liveries. Um, any special livery is obviously going to look, you know, pretty good. Um, and with Alaska, they do normally a bunch of detail based on their other releases, such as the Disneyland ones. Um, or maybe that was WestJet. Even then, um, still, I just like these special liveries. I think these look really cool. Um, the amount of detail on them is pretty outstanding. And one four hundred scale, that's really like impressive. Um, next, we have the BA seven eight nine. This one's in one four hundred scale. Um, I believe last month we saw this in one two hundred. That might be this month. Um, can't remember. But anyways, um, I I mean this is a decent release. Um, the British seven eight nine I think looks okay. Um, I do like the livery on it a bit. I think for some reason it feels like it's missing something. Maybe it's like too blank over here or something. Um, in the fuselage, it's just a bit too much white for me. But I don't know. That's just my preference. Um, sorry about that camera shake. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I guess that's still an important model, still one of the good releases from this month. Moving on, we have the Delta A330, um, uh, a little bit more mainstream, um, don't really have much of a comment on this model, so, um, moving on to our next one. We have the Air Corio. um, so this model doesn't generally get released. Um, Air Corio is from North Korea, if you weren't aware. Um, I believe this is the Russian-made Ilyushin, um, they're 72. Um, so a Russian-made aircraft, um, the, I think, I mean, I think Air Corio operates like maybe a variety of t two or three different aircraft that they fly on some daily services to Shanghai and Beijing, um, so that I've, you know, so that, so I've heard. Um, interesting aircraft, I'm surprised they got the licensing, I don't know really how they did that, I guess they just openly released it. Um, anyways, I, it's an interesting model, um, it's, it's just kind of really out of the blue, I guess, kind of something compared to all the other carriers that we've seen. Air Corio is completely out of the picture and something completely different, so, um, you know, I guess that's good. Next we have the Meridiana. Um, this is an MD-82, I'm going to call it. Um, doesn't say up there, I think this is an MD-82. Um, but yeah, the Meridiana, um, we don't really see too many Meridiana releases, I have to say. It's kind of like the Air Corio, a bit of, you know, out of the picture in this year's, um, or in this month's release, sorry. Um, Meridiana is a low-cost airline from Italy. Um, they do a couple of international destinations um, to, you know, across the ponds. I think they do like one to JFK. Um, the MD-80s, I think, are still in operation. Um, they do a lot, I mean, not a lot, but, you know, a varied amount um, across Europe. And I think they do flights to Sardinia as well. So, yeah, I mean, this is an interesting model once again. I think it's good to see. Next, you have the KLM-789. Now, for some reason, all the titles are not there anymore, so I'm just going to go off my head here. Um, next, we have the KLM-789. Good model. Um, I think KLM's having a huge revamp. I think all the stuff, all the new aircraft, I think it's all working out well for them. I think it's all looking good. Um, and I think this is one of the good models from this release. Um, so, yeah, very nice. Next, we have the 1200 Aeroflot uh, 737-800. Um, interesting model. Um, I'm not too big of a fan of Aeroflot, but I guess it's not too much of a surprise that we do see Aeroflot. Eventually, we will see a, a, you know, a couple of Aeroflot releases, um, you know, varied within you know a few months. We will see at least one Aeroflot release. Um, so yeah, not too much of a surprise here from Gemini. Next, we have the 1200 British 789. So yes, it must have been this release. Um, here it is, the 1200 789. This is probably better. I mean, it's a 789. It's going to look better at 1200. It's still going to be looking like a you know, dazzling aircraft in general. The 789, I am a fan of it. Um, so yeah, I'm definitely still a fan of this aircraft. The British Airways livery, you could have done something better with that, but you know, still a good livery. I think it's good for the British collectors, uh, obviously. And lastly, we have the Air Tahiti Nui uh, A340-300. Good release. I'm happy with this. I do like Air Tahiti Nui. Um, I like the little services from Papini to um, Paris, you know, via LA. They fly to other destinations as well. Um, I just think they're a nice, you know, little airline. I, I do like them, so I think they got an interesting livery as well. They've kept it for, you know, quite a while now. Um, and it's been forever since we've seen an Air Tahiti Nui release. They haven't even changed the livery in all that time, so um, keeping the consistency and still using AB 4300s. So yeah, that was the Gemini Jets release, guys. We're going to move on to the Phoenix Models ones. Um, so firstly, we have the Azul A330-200. Azul's a pretty good carrier. I do like them. Um, it's, they do a couple of interesting liveries. Um, they're from Brazil, by the way. Um, I do like their livery in general, but to see this is quite interesting. Um, it's called the Tudo Azul. Um, it's in this full blue livery. 
Um, I think it's pretty nice. I'm definitely a fan of it. You can see it's got the little Brazilian flag on the winglets there. Um, I think it's a pretty good release, I have to say. Next, we have the British A380. Um, this one's in one form scale as well. Good option. I think this is definitely one of the best choices that Phoenix has made. Definitely one of the more vital aircraft, so good to see from them. Next, we have an even more vital aircraft, at least in my opinion, the JAL 777-300ER in, in the One World livery. Um, good model. Anything in an Alliance livery, I'm still going to like it, even if it's not Star Alliance. Um, still good to see. I think this is one of the more vital models. I'm definitely going to be looking at getting this. Um, it's definitely one of the more important ones. JAL is one of the airlines that I'm missing from the Asian market. Um, I've got, you know, ANA, a couple of other Asian carriers like Singapore and China Airlines, but not JAL. Um, so this would definitely help in my collection um, as long as it doesn't sell out. Next is something pretty equal. This is like even bigger. The Etihad Triple Three um, in the new livery. So I was actually planning on getting a normal Triple Three in the Etihad old livery, but then Etihad decided to release this new livery. Um, so uh, this livery I think does look pretty good. I have to say on the 789, I think it does look good. Triple Three, I think a lot of people were anticipating how it was going to look. Um, and to me, from this picture, I think it does look pretty good. Um, I, I mean, that's really just my opinion. Um, I think it's pretty good. I, I definitely will be getting this model. It's one of the more vital ones, such as the Asian market. Now I'm moving into the Middle Eastern market where we've got Emirates and Qatar. I do have an Emirates and Qatar aircraft. I don't have an Etihad one, so definitely going to help in my collection. Um, and definitely pretty good looking model. It is made by Phoenix Models, so the 777 300 mold is going to be the best out there. Next we have the Goal 737-800. Interesting livery. Um, I don't really recall this being one of the previous liveries. Um, interesting design. I have to say this is one of the most surprising models this uh, month. So, good to see. Next we have the China Eastern A330-200. Now this one says something about um, the China Eastern taking their 50th A330. Um, good to see. I, I mean, I do like the China Eastern A330. Um, so I probably will be getting that as well from the Asian market since I am missing that in my collection as well. Um, really just those two, JL and China Eastern, maybe China Southern as well. Um, missing a couple carriers from there, but definitely one of the more vital releases. And that's already adding to the other China Eastern A330-200 we saw a couple months ago. Um, the next we have the one 200 scale KLM 787-9. This is probably going to be turning out to be a really nice looking model. Um, like I said earlier, the 787-9 and one 200 scale is going to look really good. I do like the aircraft in general. I like the design. I do love Boeing. Um, and I like the way they've done it. So I think in the KLM livery, it is going to look pretty good. I think it's good that KLM's come out with a new livery for it. Well, not just for it, but well, maybe they do. Um, in general, I think the livery does look good. And it's going to be one of the more popular models, I'd say. Next we have the China Southern A380, um, don't have much of a comment on this, um, yeah, <laughs> I don't know, I just, I don't know much about that, I probably won't be getting this bottle, um, I know they fly to a couple select destinations such as JFK and LAX, um, they have a, you know, a mix of using triple threes and A380s, so yeah, point of information there. Next we have the Lucky Air 738, good looking livery, something also different. Um, compared to the Gaul as well, so nice looking liveries, obviously it's got that Phoenix detail as well, um, and yeah. Next we have the British 789 in one 200 scale, so as we know, we've already seen this from uh, Gemini Jets. Not sure which one's going to be better, um, I think it really depends on the aircraft. I think with the 789, I'd say that Gemini and Phoenix are a little bit different, maybe Phoenix, maybe Gemini, depends on the colouring and the livery that people decide to go with. Um, as for the British livery, it is pretty basic, hard to mess up. Um, so I think both of them will turn out very similar. Either one would be pretty good. Um, but yeah, I think this is a pretty good model and good to see from both uh, manufacturers. Now next we have something that I'm obviously going to be happy with, the Star Alliance livery uh, A330-300 in the Thai Airways logo, uh, or with the Thai Airways logo. Um, good to see. We don't see too many Thai models. Um, at least from Gemini Jets, we never see any Thai models. Phoenix Models is really the only ones that will ever release any Thai aircraft. I think it's been like a while since we've seen any Thai aircraft really. Um, and especially the A330-300 as well. Definitely one of the better releases. Um, I'm definitely happy with this model. So yeah, looking good. Next we have the TAM A350. Now the A350 is expanding. It's already released or it's already received a couple of... Well, it's already been sent to a couple of its customers. Um, so a couple of customers have received their A350s already. Such as TAM. 
Um, guitar is another big one, so that's already a couple of one world carry was just right there. Um, delivery on this does look pretty good. I don't mind Tam that much. I mean, the fact that they left Star Alliance still pisses me off, but, you know, um, you just gotta deal with it. Delivery is a bit basic, I'll, you know, I have to say. Compared to the A380 and other aircraft we've seen, maybe it's just the photo, but this aircraft does look really tiny in this, um, from that photo, so, I don't know. Um, next we have the Zyman Air, um, Dreamliner. Good model, I, I like Zyman Air. You know, from what I've heard with them, they're not a bad airline. Um, I think they're a private airline as well, so privately owned. Um, interesting to see, and they are a Sky Team member, by the way. Next we have the Vanilla Air 320 with Sharklets. Um, another interesting livery, something out of the blue. Looking really interesting there. I, I do, sometimes I do love how Phoenix Models will release a couple of, you know, carriers that maybe you didn't know exist, or just liveries that you didn't know exist. You know, it's just kind of that special touch that just makes the you know the models you know that much more surprising and you know cool to see. Next we have the KLM 789 and 1400. Um, once again, I think KLM delivery just looks really good. I think Phoenix models will perfect this really well. Um, compared to Gemini jets, I'm not sure which one to go with. Once again, um, both of them have kind of equal you know manufacturing status. Um, so really, either one would probably work. Um, I am very interested in this model myself, so I probably will be getting the Phoenix or Gemini Jets 1. Probably will come down to pricing. If it doesn't really matter the pricing, I'll probably get the Phoenix models 1. Um, just because I, personally, I do think they are a better manufacturer. Next we have another China Eastern A3200. This one is in the Greenland Group uh, Special Livery. Good to see. Um, very open-minded. I, I do like the livery of that. And that's going to be it from the Phoenix models releases. Um, so yeah, I think out of the Phoenix models releases, we've seen some good ones. Excuse me, I've gone back. Um, I think we've seen some good ones. Um, I'm kind of happy with most of the models released. I think it is in Phoenix quality. Um, and a couple of these releases are very important, such as the Etihad and Jail. Um, a couple of the British releases, as well as the KLM ones, are quite vital as well. And I, I will assure you that those are going to have um, some of the greatest details. So definitely good models from them. Um, now next, I will just touch on these Gemini Jets releases from um, the October ones. Um, the main point is the American Eagle ERJ 145. This is one of the most surprising ones. It's already sold out on Jetway models. Um, this is one of the greatest releases ever. Um, I'm very surprised that Gemini Jets has come out with this. I had no clue this was coming. I doubt anyone saw this coming. Um, and along with the Air Canada Express ERJ 900, both of those very surprising, um, and I think it's really good to see regionals in 1-400 scale um, coming out again, especially in the E145 mold, something we haven't seen for you know a few years now. So um, very good to see that Gemini Jets is getting back into it um, with a model such as that. Um, other releases I have to say are kind of average, typical models from them. A couple of them are you know pretty good, um, but yeah, guys, that's pretty much me. I decided to make this little video about the releases. Um, and as for the channel update, I am going to be getting a new camera. My current plane spotting camera that zooms in more um, has currently broken. Um, so I don't I don't want to get it fixed. I will get a brand new camera. Um, it does cost money and I'm, I'm going to save up um, for Christmas. So it will probably end up being a Christmas present, um, which will come in before I head over to my destination um, during Christmas, which will be America. So I will be able to film my trip review with the new camera, so you guys can see it um, and all the new, you know, all the new features and stuff. I haven't exactly decided on it. It's probably going to be a Sony product, HX300 maybe, something really nice. Um, hopefully, that can last me for a few years. Current content I'm working on is the Model Airport, um, and hopefully I can upload some more Model Airport videos um, and looking at more Instagram posts and stuff. I know I haven't been that active, so I am very excited to make something new finally. I do apologize for the length of these, um, of these videos though, but I, you know, at least I'm coming out with content, um, and hopefully I'll be able to reach that 700 mark as soon as possible and just keep going with the channel um, a lot faster than I currently am. Time is kind of a constraint. I mean, I just keep dealing with time all the time. Um, <laughs> so it is true. Um, I just keep running out and I just, you know, I keep procrastinating and you know, doing other stuff, um, and I should be working more on the channel. So hopefully. Um, I will be working more on it and just producing a lot more content um, and getting a lot more travel reviews that I've been meaning to upload for you know a long while now. So thanks very much for watching, guys. Um, apologies for the length of this video once again, but I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, and I will see you guys in the next one. Thanks very much. See ya.